Howdy, welcome to BanjoBenClark.com. You know what's coming. That's right, the infamous G run slash lick, whatever you want to call it. Welcome to my website. This is your home away from home when it comes to learning how to pick on the guitar, the banjo, or the mandolin. This week we're um, continuing a song that I taught on banjo a couple weeks ago. I had a lot of requests for it immediately after I put the banjo song out, and that was Grandfather's Clock. Um, a lot of folks wanted to know if I could do a guitar solo on that, kind of an intermediate guitar solo. So I've done it. Uh, check it out here. Pretty cool, huh? It's cool to get those harmonics working. It's cool to get that cross picking working. Uh, some of you may hear that song and think that's too hard for me. I don't want you to think that because you need to try to learn stuff that maybe might sound a little too hard for you and it's probably gonna feel a little bit too hard for you. But that's how you get better is to continually try to learn uh, bigger and better stuff, okay? Um, here in a little while, I'm gonna ask you to go over to my website. Ah, where's it at? Talk amongst yourselves, please. And I'm going to ask you to go over there and become a Gold Pick member where you can get all of your tabs. This is a two page tab for this, for this particular song and a 30 minute video lesson. Every week over there, I put out a new video lesson and tabs. Um, and you can have access, full access to all of that as a Gold Pick member. I appreciate all of you who have done that already. Um, getting to be quite a few of you. I appreciate the community over there. A lot of good folks hanging out at the website. So come check it out and uh, let's learn a little bit of this grandfather's clock. Well, the title of the song says it all. This song is about old grandpa's grandfather's clock. And we're actually going to start this song out kind of in a custom way um, by mimicking those old grandfather clock um, bell tones or those... Uh, those chimes. The way that we're going to do this is play some harmonics and we're going to jump all the way up to the 12th fret um, right over the B string and what I'm going to do is use the tip of my middle finger uh, to play these particular harmonics because we just want to touch one string at a time. If you're not familiar with harmonics they just take a little while to get used to but we're not pressing the string down okay all we're doing is touching the string just touching it and at the same moment that we pick the string we're going to release our finger and we get that harmonic tone. So I'm going to go up to the 12th fret on my B string and right over that 12th fret marker, right there. We don't want to go right here in the middle where you would mash down if you were going to play it. Right over the 12th fret wire, we are going to barely touch it and release right as we pick it. So you get an octave above our B string. Then we're going to, uh, that's going to be a half note as you see there so it gets two beats and then we're going to reach right up above it on the G string and do it again. But the trick here is not to mute the B string whenever you go in for the G string. So you have to use the tip of your finger. Okay, it'd be very easy to mute it and all we'd get is just the G string ringing out. We want to try to get both of those ringing out at the same time just like those chimes on the clock. They kind of become dissonant because they're all ringing at the same time. Then we're going to jump down here to the 7th fret to get another harmonic on our D string for measure 2. Okay, It's a little tougher harmonic to get clean and loud. And then jump up to the 12th fret on that same string and get the last tone. Hopefully by the time you've done that, these first two harmonics are still ringing out. And we get a nice good overlay of harmonics and then we immediately do it backwards, just like the clock. 
Um, so that whole first uh, line is going to go like this. We're going to do a full set of these harmonics. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Then we're going to do our walk in to the song at the end of measure four there. When we get to measure five, this is going to start really the flat picking part of the tune. These are a whole lot of uh, G and D and C licks um, that I've used to, to kind of to tell the story of this melody. Um, a lot of hammer-ons, uh, a lot of slides, and uh, some more kind of, I guess, intermediate to, to uh, advanced stuff. But um, we're really going to get a good right hand work out here. Measure five sounds like this. <laughs> I want you to pay attention to those pick stroke arrows beneath each one of the notes. You notice how on the third beat there, <clears throat> excuse me, we have a hammer on from the open D string to the second fret, and that's a down stroke. That hammer on is going to take the place of our up stroke, so that the next note, um, that G string there, is going to be another down stroke. Okay, that's important. Down, 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 skip, down, up. Good job. Measure six, we're going to go in kind of this partial D7 position, I just mean that we're holding down our first fret on our B string while we play both the G and the B string. And we're going to hammer there. Finishing out with two quarter notes. Then measure seven is going to introduce something that we're going to do quite a bit in this song, that's cross picking. And really all that means is that we're kind of doing a little banjo roll with our cross pick. And this is where, uh, with our flat pick, this is where pick strokes really come uh, in handy, but we're going to do down, up, down, down, up, down. You'll notice this is over a G7 chord, okay? And what does that 7 mean? G7 means it's a G chord, but we add in the 7th tone, the flat 7th tone, dominant 7th tone of that G major scale, which is an F note, okay? So whenever you play a G7 chord, a lot of times you play it like this or like that. That's an F note that you grab there. I'm just grabbing it again down here on the third fret of the D string and working it into this little roll. And all that's doing is hinting to your ear and to the listener's ear that we're going to a C chord. That's what the, the G7 chord is, is for. Its main purpose is to let us know that we're going to the C chord. Now after you play that third fret, I want you to keep your finger down even though you don't um, have to, it doesn't tell you that in the tab, but we want to try to keep that seventh tone ringing out as we play the rest of the melody. And then release only when we get to the start of the eighth measure, where we have another little cr cross picking forward roll. Now, after we do this cross picking forward roll, I'm going to use my pinky to grab the third fret on the B string and get ready to slide. Sounds like this, measure eight. And whenever we slide with our pinky, that's going to take us right into the next position that we need, which is our index on this third fret and our ring finger on this fifth fret. And that's going to lead us right into measure nine. And we want to leave our index finger down because we're going to do a little slide. Third fret B string, fourth fret G string, slide down two frets, and then our open strings. Now, I realized that I think one time that I played this um, one time through in the performance at the beginning of the video, uh, there in measure nine, I might have only played that G string instead of both of those after the slide. That's fine. If it's uh, tough for you to get both of the strings. seven lick here that we're going to see a lot of or at least uh, different versions of it. Now another little trick to just make your playing more smooth, that first fret there on the, on the B string, if we, after we play that, go ahead and keep it down and ringing throughout the rest of that measure if you can. I realize that that makes it be quite a stretch on your left hand. But these two notes are still ringing out how that creates some resonance versus okay so it's just kind of up to you but I think it makes a little bit of a smoother sound if we still have that note ringing and then we're going to end this first time through the phrase with a big long cool a G into a D lick
measure 12. Hammer. Hammer. Then we'll, when we get back to measure 13, we're going to start that same idea over again, but introduce a couple other different licks as we go into the B part of the song. Yeah. 